Using Numbers to find the greatest individual season in NBA history. Da bin ich ja mal gespannt, was er meint, wer die beste Season. Pass auf. Pass auf, am Ende ist es irgendwie eine Jokish Season von letztes Jahr oder dieses Jahr oder so. Pass auf. NBA history, who had the best individual season and what year did it take place? What would your answer be? Can a season truly be great? 2023. Pass auf, zwei Möglichkeiten. Will Chamberlain, damals 1940, 50, 60, irgendwie sowas um den Dreh. Oder, oder 2023, 2022, Nikola Jokic. If a player doesn't lead their team to a championship, what about empty stats? Or years where players put together incredible seasons, but didn't walk away with the MVP? Just like many other fans of the game, I've always wondered, who truly had the greatest season in NBA history? If we were to somehow add up all the things that a player did throughout a season, their impact and value, and condense all of it into one number, some sort of value or greatness score, then we could determine who had the best season of all time. And so that's what I did. A formula to decide who had the best individual season in NBA history. And not only did I find that season, but it was so great that no other season comes even close. Let me get my response. Today's video is brought to you by SeatGeek. A new NBA season is upon us. Just love a game f him rails with big games. With the 2023 NBA season going completely off the rails with big games, huge numbers, and record-breaking performances every other night, yeah. I had to gather myself and put all of this madness into context. How historic are these seasons, really? Where do the individual performances of this season rank among the greatest season performances in NBA history? Well, in order to answer this question, I had to create a basic formula that factors in everything a player does on an individual level throughout a season. But first, I had to determine what numbers and awards actually matter and which ones don't. For example, winning the MVP is the greatest individual award a player can win, but there have been countless amazing seasons in which players did not win the award. So we can't use this as a metric to measure how great an individual season really was. I also had to exclude statistics that were heavily skewed by team performance, like win totals or even stats like offensive and defensive rating. We are, after all, looking for the best individual season. So kann auch sein, dass Oscar Robinson von damals noch am Start ist. Oder Russell Westbrook. After much deliberation, I narrowed down the criteria for the best season ever to these nine factors. Points, rebounds, and assists. If a player was selected to an all-defensive team. If a player won Defensive Player of the Year. If they led the league in one of the three major statistics. Player efficiency rating, win shares, box plus minus, value over replacement, and just to spice things up, All-Star Game MVP. The total number that a player achieves from these nine metrics is their season score. Score. The higher the score, the greater the season. And before we get started, I want to point out a few things. As I stated before, I did not factor in MVPs in this experiment, because there's just been far too many incredible seasons where players were not crowned the most valuable player. Like in 1989, when Michael Jordan clearly had the best season that year, but Magic Johnson won the MVP. Another thing to keep in mind here is that most statistics that are available today have only been around since 1975. So any great season that took place in the early 70s and 60s was excluded from this experiment, which actually shouldn't even be a problem since a lot of NBA fans act like those seasons never even happened anyways. <laughs> Another major factor that I left out was postseason success. And I know this will be a controversial decision, but in order to even make it deep into the playoffs, a great play player still needs a solid supporting cast or else he has no real shot to win it all. An obvious example of this is Nikola Jokic's last season with the Nuggets. One of the best individual seasons of all time just to be knocked out of the first round of the playoffs in a gentleman's sweep. Despite what a player did or did not accomplish throughout a season, we are looking for the best season from a player who had the biggest impact on the court game after game. And after spending countless, mind-numbing, migraine-inducing hours searching through hundreds of seasons from any and every player who even had a shot at putting together an all-time year, I have found the single greatest individual season in NBA history. And it's a season that was so good, no other season by any other player comes even close. But I want to give some perspective on these season scores and what a good season looks like, what a great season looks like, and what an all-time season looks like. 
Back in 2018, LeBron James finished second in MVP voting and had one of the most complete all-around seasons of his career. In hindsight, some fans even believe he should have won the MVP that season. And according to our metric, that year LeBron James had a season score of 109.7. This is a great season by any standard, nearly an all-time season. But James Harden rightfully took home the MVP with a season score of 112.4. In 2015, Ooh. Steph Curry won his first league MVP. Das erstmal sieht da, das erstmal, dass man sieht, dass irgendwo die Punkte auch wirklich MVP and put together one of the most memorable seasons in recent NBA history. That year, his season score was 97.3. In 2006, Kobe Bryant had statistically the best season of his career and achieved a season score of 119.1. And yet, Steve Nash won the MVP that season with a season score of just 84.1. But these numbers are all relative. A season score of 20 is about league average. A score of about 45 is what you would find in a quality starter. A season score of about 65 is an all-star level season, and a season score of 85 is an all-NBA level season. And once a player gets into the triple digits, a season score of 100 or more, they are well on pace to earning an MVP. But even a score of 100 is nowhere near what a player must accomplish to even crack a top 50 season of all time. Because the 50th greatest individual season came from James Harden in 2018 when he piled up a season score of 112.4. In fact, here's a chart of the top 50 individual seasons in NBA history according to our season score metric. The first three seasons to crack the top 50 all came from James Harden in just a four year span between 2017 and 2020. Michael Jordan was so good, so early in his career, that even his rookie season made the list as the 42nd best in <laughs> individual season of all time. Tracy McGrady put together his best season in 2003 with a season score of 115.3. Hakeem's 1994 campaign lands at the 35th spot of all time, and just above him you'll find Steph's unanimous Digga, dass selbst Michael Jordan da noch oben dabei ist, ne? ist halt so wild. MVP season in 2016. Nikola Jokic achieved a career high season score last season with a total of 120.3 points. 1987. The 23rd best individual season yeah. of all time. But Giannis actually scored just slightly higher than Jokic did last season with a season score mm. of 120.9. Russell Westbrook's MVP year is the 17th best individual season of all time and easily the best season of his career. Keep going up and we'll find the best seasons from some of the greatest players of all time. Michael Jordan selbst über Russell Westbrook mit seinem Triple Double drüber. Dwayne Wade in 2009, KG in 2004, Kareem in 76. In 2020, Giannis put together one of the greatest seasons ever with a season score of 129.8, just behind LeBron's 2009 season, which turns out to be the best individual season of his career where he earned a season score of 130.2. And after this mark, we enter the Michael Jordans. <laughs> MJ's iPod. No, where it's a whole lot of MJ reeling off some of the best individual seasons of all time, year after year. And right at the top are the three best individual seasons of all time. David Robinson's criminally underrated 1994 season. Trotzdem Jordan noch so weit oben, ne? Shaq und David Robinson finde find ich angemessen. Season, Shaq's masterpiece in the 2000 NBA season and Michael Jordan's 1989 season that earned him a season score. Wir finden gerade raus, wer die beste Season ever in der NBA hatte. Of 137.7. Hold up. There's one season missing here. Oh, there it is. Michael Jordan's 1988 regular season, widely regarded as the greatest of all time. And that's because it is. With a season score of 154.8, Jordan's yeah. 1988 campaign is the greatest individual season in NBA history. And it's not even remotely close. But I want to take a deeper look at these results, because they reveal some interesting things about what we know and what we thought we knew. Michael Jordan is one of the best. Some all-time legends that didn't even have a single season that made the top 50. Look at all the top 10, Digga, how often Michael Jordan is there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 fucking times, Digga. 6 fucking times. LeBron James, Giannis, Shaquille and David Robinson are also there. 
Aber Michael Jordan selbst Platz 1 und 2. Die List include Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Tim Duncan, Charles Barkley, Dirk Nowitzki and many more. On the other hand, there have been a handful of players that have had multiple seasons that crack the top 50. These players include Michael Jordan with 11 top 50 seasons of all time, LeBron James with five, James Harden, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and David Robinson with four apiece, Kareem and Garnett with three, and Hakeem, Kobe, Jokic, Shaq, and Chris Paul, all with two top 50 seasons each. But the most interesting thing that these numbers reveal is that the second best individual season in NBA history didn't even earn an MVP. Michael Jordan's 1989 season ranks second all time among season scores and somehow he still finished second in MVP voting that season behind Magic Johnson who Magic earned Johnson a season damals, score of 103.9. Bruder Magic Johnson war damals Michael Jordan bevor es Michael Jordan gab, ne? Still a great score, but nowhere near the season Michael had. And if you take a look at their numbers throughout that season, it's clear that a robbery took place here. Same thing happened in 1990, when Michael Jordan put up the fifth highest season score in NBA history and finished not second, but third in MVP voting behind Magic Johnson and Charles Barkley. Oh, and Glück again, the start. numbers are clear as day. This, da hätte ich mich so drüber aufgeregt. this MVP should have gone to Michael, and it's not even close. Now, the idea that Michael Jordan and LeBron James should have probably won more MVPs throughout their careers becomes even more glaring through the lens of this season score metric. But of all the seasons that made an appearance on this list, only the 2009 season features three players who all put up top 50 seasons of all time. That year, LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Paul all not only had historically great seasons, all three of them put up top 25 seasons in NBA history. As I spoke about before, in most seasons, a game score of 100 will give a player a real shot at winning the league MVP. CP3, D. Wade, and LeBron all had season scores of over 120. But with this NBA season being flooded with all-time talent and incredible performances every single night, are there any players that are putting together seasons this year that would crack this all-time list? We'll have to make a couple estimations here because some stats within our metric like VORP and win shares are cumulative stats. But at their current pace, here are the projected season scores for the best players in the NBA. NBA this season, with the top five season scores coming from Luka, Jokic, Giannis, Embiid, and Tatum. And if a season score of 100 warrants a real shot at the MVP award, then there are currently six, six players who are all having an MVP caliber season. But in terms of LeBron's 2013 season, and Nikola Jokic is on pace to having a season score of 116.4, which would land him at the 38th spot all time. And after gathering data from hundreds of seasons of dozens of players, I got to thinking about peaks. Who was the best when they were at their best? Some players have maybe one or two seasons that stand far above any other year they've put together, like Tracy McGrady in 2003 or Russell Westbrook in 2017, while other players completely control the game on an individual level season after season. So here is a chart of NBA legends and the combined season scores of the best five-year stretch of their career. For example, Isaiah Thomas's best five-year stretch came between 1984 and uh. 1988, where his total season scores throughout those years was 379.3. Damian Lillard's run from 2017 to 2021 earned him a total of 438.9. Just above Magic Johnson and Moses Malone is Karl Malone, who is the first player on this chart to crack 500. Nikola Jokic is currently in his best five-year stretch and has a total score of 508.8. But this number will jump much higher after this season, somewhere around the 540 range. Kobe, Hakeem, and Bird all had similarly great primes in the NBA, ranging from 514 to 518. Tim Duncan is sandwiched right between Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant. Our first big jump occurs with James Harden's run between 2016 and 2020. And after these marks, we get into the very best individual runs in NBA history.
Ich hätte so gerne Will Chamberlain da drin gesehen, aber da fehlen halt einfach die Metrics für mich. Shaq in the early 2000s, a young Kareem, a mind-boggling five-year individual stretch from David Robinson in the mid-90s, Giannis's current historic run dating back to 2018, and LeBron James at his absolute peak from 2008 to 2012. Just five points shy of cracking the so 600 big. mark. Yeah, Possibly the greatest individual prime of all time. Well... At least it would have been if Michael Jordan didn't exist. Because from 1988 to 1992, MJ rattled off five of the top 16 individual seasons of all time. By far the greatest stretch of seasons we've ever seen from any player, earning him a prime total score of 680.9, leaving him in a league of his own, even amongst the greatest players in NBA history. Hope you all enjoyed, and as always, Until next time. Bruder. Das war wieder ein absolut wildes Video, was einfach bewiesen hat, dass Michael Jordan der beste Basketballer ist, der jemals auf dieser Erde gelaufen ist. Er has to be LeVar Balls in insane season where he averaged a staggering 2.2 points. Er ist ekel. Every full season MJ played with the Bulls, he made this list. That's an insane feat. Das stimmt auch, Bruder. Hat man gar nicht gemerkt, ne? Michael Jordan einfach eine Klasse für sich, Digga. Und das hat auch so eine Metrics, wo LeBron nicht damit glänzen kann, dass er halt jede Season, jede Season da ist, wo er nur einen bestimmten Zeitabschnitt hat, wo er gut sein kann. Und in diesem Zeitabschnitt war er schlechter als MJ, Digga. Das ist einfach Fact.